Hello there, YouTube. I thought that I would do some Let's Plays of games from the Games for Change website, or just games in general that I find that have some sort of message. So the first one I wanted to do was the Parable of the Polygons, which is by Nikki Case and Vihart. And uh, we can go to the game here. I don't really know anything about Nikki Case, but looking at the website, I might have to look at more of these in the future. Uh, so, Nikki Case is creating stories about systems. And then I think we all know and love Vi Heart, or V Heart. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Um, but yes, so there are a couple of games that I want to play, but I'll just start out with this one and show you a little bit about it. So, it's a game, as it says over here, creating stories about systems, so it uses a system to uh, tell a message and create a story. I also want to state that if anyone's interested in using game development to make games for um, just telling their own story or making a point about something uh, or displaying data about stuff, you know, let me know if you're not sure how to get started and I can point you in the right directions if you're interested in programming or just tools you can use to make games. That's what I'm here for. I would be happy to help out. And I'll have a little bit more information about game uh, making tools at the end of the video. So let me just write that down so I remember. Uh, so... Yeah. Oh, and my pizza timer is going to go off in like 10 seconds. So let me take care of that real quick and I'll be right back. Alright, so let's go through this. This is a story of how harmless choices can make a harmful world. So, these little cuties are 50% triangles, 50% squares, and 100% slightly shapist. But only slightly. In fact, every polygon prefers being in a diverse crowd. So, there are a lot of these little windows, and you can move it around. It's interactive. So, we move the polygon. Notice that the blue squares are all kind of eh, but these are all happy. You can only move them if they're unhappy with their immediate neighborhood. Once they're okay where they are, you can't move them until they're unhappy with their neighbors again. You've got one simple rule. I want to move if less than one third of my neighbors are like me. So here, only one of my six neighbors are like me, less than one third. Here, this one's happy. Two out of six neighbors are like me. Exactly one third. Meh. All neighbors are like me. Also meh if I've got no neighbors. So this guy, I can, you know, can I move him? No, I can't move him around there. But I can make both of these guys miserable. <laughs> so, harmless, right? Every polygon should be happy with a mixed neighborhood. Surely their small bias can't affect the larger shape society that much. Well, Let's drag and drop the unhappy polygons until nobody is unhappy. So we can move them to various things. And we can do multiple boards also. So let's see, we got all these unhappy shapes. Maybe if we move this guy over. No, oh, that didn't really help. I guess it has to be the immediate neighbors. So let's move these two. These guys are happy, but now... Okay, so we got this string of happy guys. I'll put this guy here. Let's see, this guy. No, now he's unhappy. Okay, now he's unhappy. Uh, triangle's unhappy. Now the blue's unhappy. Okay, now triangle is like freaking out over here. Let's see if we can move this guy over here. He's still unhappy. So as you see, it kind of ends up where when we were trying to make certain people happy, it ends up just putting um, these characters all in together and the unhappy ones end up kind of clustering together until we get basically segregation. So, let's scroll down some more. So, our shape society becomes super segregated. Sometimes a neighborhood just becomes square, and it's not their fault if no triangles want to stick around. And a triangular neighborhood would welcome a square, but they can't help it if the squares ain't interested. So, let's try to move these guys around. See? Eh. In this next bit, unhappy shapes automatically move to random empty spots. There's also a graph that tracks how much segregation there is over time. So here we have kind of a just random board. 
Okay, we'll start with zero and let's start moving. They still have the one third bias. And as they move around randomly to empty spots, a, it starts to get kind of normalized and eventually it just ends. It stops. And now you have big clusters of each type. So what's up with that? These are good shapes, nice shapes. And yet, though every individual only has a slight bias, the entire shape society cracks and splits. So see, we can start with just one little shape that's unhappy, and the only place I can move it is over here, but once I do that, then these two shapes are unhappy, and this guy is unhappy. So if I move this guy over here to be happy, well, I'm out of room for this guy, so I have to move him over, and then we can see that this pattern emerges where as we try to normal make all of them happy, they kind of end up changing. So small individual bias can lead to large collective bias. Equality is an unstable equilibrium. The smallest of bias can push a whole society past the tipping point. Well, what if we taught these shapes to have zero bias? Or if you're feeling particularly nasty, more bias. So we can adjust these sliders. We can choose whatever board and let's see, I'll move if less than 33% of my neighbors are like me. So we'll just start with the default, which goes kind of the way it was in that last example. So, okay, now we have these groups. Let's try less bias. And they still kind of move around a little bit. Okay, and then let's move to more bias. It'll probably take longer for them to get into some sort of setting that they like. Okay, so if less than half of my neighbors are like me, then this is what ends up happening. Okay, so let's keep going. Notice how much more segregated things become when you increase the bias beyond 33%. What if the threshold was at 50%? Seems reasonable for a shape to prefer not being in the minority. So, we Oh no! Now it's a lot harder to get them all to be happy. Then, eh. Now they're like that. Wants to move if less than 33, wants to move the stuff if less than 50%. So yeah, just turning everyone's biases down to zero, right? Haha, <laughs> nope! The real world doesn't start anew with random shuffling of citizens every day. Every day, you're not shuffling. World starts segregated, what happens when you lower the bias? So they're already segregated, and what if we say, okay, now nobody's bias anymore. Start moving. But nobody moves, they're all okay with where they are at. New board. Oh. Let's move it up. Now they're gonna start doing that again. So, once you have that bias there, and it's taken its effect on society, m changing the bias doesn't really undo it. You actually have to start moving in the other direction. So see what doesn't happen? No change. No mixing back together. In a world where bias ever existed, being unbiased isn't enough. We're gonna need active measures. What if shapes wanted to seek out just a little more variety? So now, wants to move if more than 90% of their neighbors are like them. So, let's see, these guys are all together. Let's try to move them around. Okay, we got some happiness here. Let's move these guys over. These guys are unhappy, and now we have a happier group. Whoa, even though each polygon would be okay with having up to 90% of their neighbors that are like them, they all mix together. Let's see this play out on a larger scale when we change the amount of bias and anti-bias for all shapes. The world starts segregated. What happens when shapes demand even the smallest bit of diversity? So I will move if 10% or if less than 10% are like me, or if more than 80% are like me. So let's start moving. And we'll see that as it goes, let me scroll down a bit, they start desegregating. And then we get that. So let's keep going. All it takes is a change in the perception of what an acceptable environment looks like. So, fellow shapes, remember it's not all about triangles versus squares, it's about deciding what we want the world to look like and settling for no less. Get them all in the box of friendship. So if we try to just go ahead and move people, well, now no, we're stuck. We can't move these guys. They're just meh. So at first, going out on your own can be isolating, but by working step by step, we'll get there. So we'll 
move these guys over. So they're still unhappy, but it just takes work. Whee! And then confetti! Okay, so then it gives you a sandbox to play around with. And you can adjust the amounts and the biases and all of that. And we'll just look at this part. Wrapping up. So, small individual bias can lead to large collective bias. When someone says a culture is shapist, they're not saying the individuals are in it are shapist, and they're not attacking you personally. The past haunts the present. Your bedroom floor doesn't stop being dirty just because you stop dropping food all over the carpet. Creating equality is like staying clean. It takes work, and that's always a work in progress. Demand diversity near you. If small biases created the mess we're in, small anti-biases might fix it. Look around you, your friends, your colleagues, that conference you're attending. If you're all triangles, you're missing out on some amazing squares in your life. It's That's unfair to everyone. Reach out beyond your immediate neighbors. And then there's some more information if you're interested. Um, if you can donate, it's good to donate to these groups. Or you could, uh, you could donate time or money um, to help teach others to code. And then let's also look. Uh, there's also translations, so if you wanted to show this off in Hindi, for example, you could do that. And then there are also some others that are based off this. I haven't looked at these. I guess you can modify it and see what happens when you have uh, pentagons also. <laughs> so yeah, and this playable post is public domain, so you can use it for whatever. So I thought that was a pretty nice uh, way of making a point through systems. And I have a book that I bought I accidentally left it at the office, but um, it is called Persuasive Games, and that is also about using systems and simulations to make a point. So I mentioned that I would uh, bring up some resources for making games. One thing you might check out, if you're not necessarily interested in the programming side of things, uh, you can look up Sorting Hat Game Dev, and there's Sorting Hat at and this will help you out, it is by Zoe Quinn. So it'll ask you some questions like, what kind of stuff do you want to make? Do you want to just do a visual novel? Do you want to do an adventure game? Do you want to do something 2D? You click on it and it'll give you some um, advice for tools you could use. And let's see, there's a game example. There might be some tutorials or something like that. So those might be good if you are interested in making games, but not necessarily in programming. Um, so I can point you to some of these tools as well. If you are interested in programming, I can point you towards other tools. So feel free to, oh, here's the Linux link. Feel free to send me an, an email or a comment just to let me know what you're interested in doing. And um, I'd love to hear what you're working on. There's only so many stories I can tell as being a white person. I can't really make games for everyone's experiences and I don't want to because I know that I would uh, miss things. I'd be open to doing programming for somebody else's story um, so that the, I could help them tell what they have to say. Uh, but really I can only kind of talk for me and my experiences kind of under the uh, LGBTQIA plus umbrella and uh, I guess as a person who presents feminine in masculine spaces such as computers and tech. So, uh, but yes, here's some, some Linux tools, which I like to use Linux. I like free tools, so I can always point you to free tools. So yes, that was um, Parable of the Polygons. If you're interested in some other games for change, I might do this one later here, but you can go to Games for Change and click on Games, and they have some different categories, and they have some different games. So there's um, stuff about climate change, or just about politics, human rights, health, and all of that. So thanks for watching. I hope that this game was pretty interesting to you, and uh, if you know any cool games that I should play through that have a similar kind of message, um, just about anything, let me know.